Hello again, this is Bob Sweeney, back again in my basement workshop working on the latest solar project. Actually, this is what I'm going to call version two of my sol sliding solar array system. This was um, version one was tested over the this, uh, summer by taking it out and doing boondocking. It got a good month and a half, two months of testing and found it several problems that needed to be corrected on the system. There was a major problem with these bent rails right here that I used for attaching the bottom and the lower panels. These rails, unfortunately, I couldn't get a very consistent change in depth, the step between here and here. The other problem we ran into is that the edge of this right here and this would hit on some of the yeah. electrically the system worked great when I, but the problem ran into was bringing the panels back in that we uh, is when most of the issues would happen and the most disastrous thing that happened was having the panel uh the safety wire that i had that would get caught if this was ex we would pull this out extended safety wire was got caught in this little area right here and then when this came back in it would go and basically stop the track from moving altogether the other side of the track would keep moving because this linear actuator is going to make it move 300 pounds of uh, power on here it moved and until it broke things unless you were there on the switch to turn it off so here is version two of the solar extension project. What I've done here is gone to a triangular mount, much easier to put together. Uh, pardon all the extra holes, this is what you get from experimenting. Uh, and the triangular mount is much easier to work with and get aligned properly. To protect the track, I use this aluminum shield which wraps around the track and keeps it protected primarily when you're driving this keeps wind driven dirt and rain debris going into it we went through a few dust storms in different places that really gummed up the tracks now part of my goal is also still make this easy to take apart so that i'm thinking every fall take everything down or at least take the upper panel off and then get in and clean this area. This makes it fairly easy to do. Here you can see where this has been moved. The linear actuator has been moved to the uh, middle and I'm using the same type of bracket. Worked pretty well. These are just lined up and then pinned in place. Wire control is this cable raceway which is used to control and keep the wires from the upper panel from getting caught and, and dangling. Over here, we still have a protective cover for the linear actuator. And since I don't have this connected, the way it slides, let's see if I can do this one-handed. Gotta get it off the stop, there we go. Now, this will slide out. to full extension and then a little bit beyond. So this little gap there is to prevent shading from what the upper panel onto the lower panel. And there you can see the track. There's no wire in there right now, but, but that's the way it's set up. So if you want to make your own, the quick brief description of what I did and some of the decisions that were made on this, First thing is to measure the width of your panel. For me, this is 20 inches across from one side to the other. Uh, these are the Renogy 100 amp compact design. And for this, I chose a 22 inch long marine stainless steel slide track. This is designed for outdoor uh, wet conditions, stainless steel. And also uh, it's a I believe this was the 150 pound mount 
So since the Rena Jeep panels are only uh, around 14 pounds, uh, this is more than enough and should hold up for even minor uh, snow conditions if uh, you should get into that situation. I've set it up on here where I mounted it halfway on both sides, basically about an inch on either side. So this is centered on the tra uh, track. And we can, uh, these are half inch, oh uh, no, excuse me, quarter, these are quarter inch bolts, stainless steel bolts with uh, lock nuts on the back side. You have to make sure that these are low profile because it's got to slide underneath right there here you can see that that's all the taller it can be that's also the consideration on these bolts here which also have to be low profile so they will uh, slot the heads will slide underneath there without uh, interference too so every all the hardware is going to be stainless steel to reduce uh, corrosion issues when you remove the rail from the slide this is this portion right here and you see what the raw piece looks like what I do is I have these two holes you can see a tall one and a, a vertical and a horizontal slotted one those are what I'm using to mount the bracket on and in this case if we, if we could look at this one okay. here this is the same holes are right there and this one and this one the next thing we want to look at is how much clearance do you want between the two panels this is a just about an inch clearance which is what i wanted right there and actually here's the good view you can see the spacers that were made these are actually delron plastic that i had laying around about a oh i think three quarter inch diameter uh, piece right there that I drilled a quarter inch hole in it for the stainless bolt and then use us I have a small lathe which I just cut that to size uh, it turns out to be about half just a hair over half an inch thick after cutting out the spacers here triangle pieces next was just cleaning them up a little bit with uh, some sandpaper and a file and then drilling holes so that uh, all these holes are matching and the same. So that part is complete. Okay, here the brackets are being mounted on the slide. I just put it in a vise to make it easier to control. And these screws are sized for the size of the slot. These have to be 632 stainless steel with Lock, uh, nylon knock, lock nuts on here. You gotta make sure that these screws are low enough profile that when they slide back and forth, they don't catch the other internal workings. Now that the sliding rails and the mounts are installed, you can see these things work pretty well. Just for sliding in and out. Got the both sides done. Now it's time to drill the attachment points. Now if this piece is on top, in order to get the correct alignment on these holes, what I'm gonna do is first I'm gonna line up these two sides more or less over top of each other and even on both ends. So that's more or less the spot right there. And I push this piece down here right up against that. So with that, now, using a hammer and a, a set piece right here, I can go and create a mark where the, where the uh, drill hole needs to be drilled. I'll do that on this side and then the other side. We also have to make it, take into account the difference in uh, width for this piece right here. So for that, We've got four large, uh, four spacers that were cut out specifically for it. So what those will do will go in between that and that, like that. We bolt it down with a stainless 
steel screw. So here is the rail with the spacer connected with stainless steel bolts on both ends. The next step is going to be attaching the cable raceway. Now, cable raceway is just a bunch of interlocking links like this. And as you can see, one direction they rotate and will bend. The other direction, they don't. So what we're going to be doing is needing to slide the panels out is that the top panel we don't want these wires to dangle so what we have to do is come up with a way using the raceway to allow these wires to be bent and have the excess length that we need for when this thing is extended out to go back and also um, retract these guys without uh, having the cables hanging down. Here's the cable raceway all hooked up now. And as you can see, it's set up so that it doesn't fall down, but it will rotate around this corner. So if we close the panel and see how it controls, and we just set it up so that when this is fully closed, there's just a few links, whoops, a few links here around the end just to allow uh, basis for the uh, solar panel wires to uh, connect to. Next step is taking this 21 inch or 22 inch long linear actuator and the length of this was to match the side of the, the size of the slide mechanism. What we're going to do is this would be mounted right here, basically the middle of the panel and to hold it in place I've already pre-drilled the holes in which these uh, stainless steel uh, clamps will be used to hold it in place. So that'll be the next step is putting that in, in there. And here the linear actuator has been clamped in place. Clamps aren't don't have to be terribly tight but just snug to keep it from moving. The amount that it sticks out on this end is going to be dependent on how you connect up to the upper panel here. So when this thing pulls out, it connects to the upper panel to pull it out. For the bracket that, that attaches to the upper panel, I made these made out of some aluminum C-channel, uh, just a couple 45 degree cuts and a bend in it just to kind of pretty it up but this would be bolted in place to the top panel through this hole and here's the finished setup bolted in there clevis pin with a retainer I just put a piece of plastic in here just to take up a little bit of the gap. It's not necessary, but uh, it kind of it helps finish up the look. The final step is installing the guards that go over the track. If we look at the track right here. There they are. Here is a cover that's been made for a slightly wider. You see it's got the holes that have been drilled in some background here and it's been cut to fit around the triangle mounting pieces so if we look at this it will go right in here all right now the panels have been put back up on the roof they're not secure yet or wired up and that's what we'll go do next first thing though what we're going to do is secure the panels down and to do that what I've got here is Iron Ridge rails, and they use a nice little system right here. The bolt right here fits in the little slot, and then on the top of this, there is a little uh, washer with uh, ridges or sharp points that stick down that actually grab onto the panels. You can see where they grabbed on before, and 
that is what it holds it in place. So there's four of these. Makes it very easy to put on and take off and adjust the panel. So we put it on like that, and then it's just a tightening down of the, with the 11 millimeter. At this point, I've disconnected the clevis pin that holds these two together. So I can move this in and out, and we can check on the how well the raceway is going. And you see it, it extends well, goes back in. I'm looking for any interferences. Smooth operation. Everything seems to be working okay. So we're ready to go on it. So what I'm going to have to do now is we're going to put the wire in the raceway. Now I'm in the process of putting the wire in the raceway. As you see the wire, you can't push the wire through because it it's got the connectors on the end. But the raceway, it's got these nice little plastic pieces that pop out of the way. I'll try to show you it one-handed here that you just put these things in and then they snap in place. Raceway wires are connected to the upper panel. The only thing left to do here is that these wires need to be ta uh, held up and so they don't drop down and interfere. And also putting in the clevis pin and the end piece. So this is the final product. Here it is with all the panels sitting up here. The ones here on the right side are actually connected up right now and are running and you see they're extended the ones on the left the upper panels are not connected right now i ran out of wiring and hopefully that'll be showing up tomorrow but decided to go ahead and get the video done and panels extended so we've got uh, 1150 watts of solar on top of the LTV. This is what it looks like from underneath. A little bit of an awning look to it, but you can see there's the tracks for all the wiring and the panel wiring is set up in there and I use zip ties to hold it in place to keep it from falling down. These are the controls for retracting and extending the panels on either side. They're independent of each other. Uh, these switches are three-way switches, but as soon as the panel goes and gets to fully in, in or out, it automatically stops the motor anyway. It's got uh, limit switches. But to retrieve, let's retract this side. And if you look up here, you can see panels moving in slowly. See how the track for the wire goes and rotates to keep the wires nice and um, stable so nothing is falling. This is the end of this installation. I have just one more job to do, and as soon as the wire comes in, I'll go and make uh, some custom wiring up the top and also secure that to the roof. And we'll be ready to take this thing out, version two, out for testing.